Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Verbo. So let's begin. Now when you start writing a program, you will deal with a lot of data. As the amount of data gets bigger and bigger, it could be difficult if these data are not properly organized. So a variable are used to store a data. If you remember in our previous video, we have successfully created six of these variables, each one of them storing a data coming from our field bus. When these data are being stored with a variable, it will make it simpler for a programmer to work with it when developing their logic. So let's begin with declaring a variable. Now to declare a variable, you always start with a name or identifier and followed by a data type. So in this case, I have managed to write a variable named my variable and the data type is a boolean. So let's talk about name. For a name, you can use any name except for a keyword reserved for IEC 611.31-3. And some of the examples are var. So you can use a name like this. You can use a var or maybe use a program. Okay. So to make it simple, um, anything in blue color, you shouldn't use it as a name. And the next thing that you need to remember, it's uh, you always start with a letter instead of a number. So this one is good, but you can't start with maybe one, my variable. And the next thing is um, a data type. So uh, depending on how big is the data that you want to store, uh, there is always a right data type for you. Um, so in this case, we are using a Boolean. For Boolean, it only has two possibility. It's either true or false. When you talk about the data type, I can classify into two different areas. The first one, we have a standard. And the second one, we have a user-defined. So let's focus on a standard data type. So these are the most commonly used data type uh, in a PLC programming. So I have created uh, uh, some of the example in here. So the first one, we have a Boolean again. Uh, when you have something which uh, only has two possibilities, is either true or false, uh, this could be coming from a switch, so from a sensor, then definitely a boolean would be a good choice for you. And if you can see on, on this side, I have also initialized the value. So by default, if you declare a variable this way, when the runtime it starts, it's always false. But if you initialize this way, the default value would be true. Okay, and um, so let's look at the next one. We have integer. So integer would be a really good choice if you want to store a whole number. Um, and then the next thing is we have a real. So this is also a whole, uh, it's, it's a number. However, you can see that uh, if the number has a significant figures, then a real is a way to go. And the next thing, if you need to store a set of text, then you can always go for a string. So in this case, um, if I need to store a web URL, um, I can use a string data type. And uh, the way to assign the value to it, uh, you have to use a single quotation at the start and at the end. Okay. And the next thing is we have a time. Time is uh, one of the common things uh, you would use as a programmer. The format of the time is uh, T hashtag 3S. So in this case, it's a uh, three second. So if you want to do three milliseconds, you can use MS. Okay. Um, the next thing is we have a, a user-defined data type. Now, what, what is a, a user-defined data type? So a user-defined data type allows you to customize the data types. Uh, when we talk about a standard data type, this is always based on the standard of IEC 611.31-3. So basically you you can only use it without uh, so many specification, but with a user-defined data type, you can specify 
um, for example if you are using array you can specify the length of the array now i have declared a variable the name of the variable is people and um, i have um, uh, write an array command on uh, this variable and the index is 1 to 100 and then off string so let's try to see uh, how it looks like so now i can go online so now if i try to expand the variable you can see there are hundreds of them and each one of them is basically a string which of course is useful for me to store data so if i want to store something i can put a name And uh, let's look at uh, the second um, user-defined data type. So the second one, we have a struct. Now you see the problem is uh, with an array, you can only have one data type with a line of declaration. So this is where a struct comes as an advantage. If you declare a struct, you can have a multiple data type inside a struct. And in that way, you can specify how many uh, different data types you want and they all can be grouped together. So let me show you how to do it. So I'm gonna just delete it again and uh, show it to you. So now, in order for you to create a structure, so you have to navigate to DUT uh, and then right click, add, um, DUT, and uh, there are a few choices. So now I'm gonna focus on a structure. So maybe I wanna call it identity and then I can click open then you should see something like this. So everything that we write in between here would be the content of our structure. So uh, let me just write it here and you guys can follow me. So the first one, I wanna put a name and the data type is a string. And the second one, we have a, um, uh, let's put an, uh, an H, okay? Um, then of course it's an integer and then next time is, uh, the next thing is height real okay so now we have three of these um, now I can navigate back to my main program so now I will give a name for it maybe a uh, sort of people maybe I can use the one um, and then identity So in order for me to use, the first thing is of course I have to declare this on my local variables and the second thing, oops sorry, so I can call it back here on my editor so I can use people one dot and I can it says all the um, variable I have uh, declared inside that uh, struct. So now I will give it name is, of course this is a string. then I'm gonna do all of them so I just change this one in order to assess a different um, sub variable um, the next one is of course um, h because this is an integer so maybe I will write it here the next thing is Is height cost one eighty point three. Okay. Now what I can do is um, I can compile again. Okay, so if I open it, then I can see all of the value that I have written to the variable. And it's uh, actually a one, way, uh, one of a good way to go if you want to have a different data type. And uh, you can also ex uh, uh, extend this um, structure that we have declared with the um, array that we have in here. So let me show you how to do it. So let me just comment this one and delete this. 
So say I have an identity. Now I can just uh, copy this and put instead of string, I can paste it to the existing array. So now instead of a string, now it has identity. So let's see you how it looks like inside. Okay. So now you see. So as soon as I combine this array with um, identity, which is the stru structure, it will give me a hundred people, and each one of them will have a name, age, and height, which is kind of useful for certain application. The next thing that you need to know is constant. So what is a constant in a certain application? You want to be able to do it this way whereby you initialize but the problem if we initialize right is uh, whatever that you declare in here uh, it can always be override in the program editor so say for example in i have nvar and halfway of in the program i've written a new value for it say now it's a uh, maybe 100 now i can try to log in And you see now, my new value of uh, Envar is uh, 100. Okay, So this is where constant comes in handy. So constant works just like initialization. However, it will not allow you to override the value. Say now I have Biva C. The initial value is true. And uh, now I will try to override. Which is false. And let's see what will happen. Okay, now as soon as I try to compile, it will give me an error. So, if you do need a um, um, constant value and this value you don't want any part of a program to override it, then a constant is one of the ways to go. So, for all these variables, right, uh, where to write them? Now we understand um, what are they and how to do it. And uh, now we want to understand where can we uh, implement this. So for all these variables that I have shared with you, you can either write it here. We call it a local uh, variable editor. Or you can uh, write it here, uh, global variable editor. So what is the difference? The difference is if you write it in on a local variable editor, there is actually a limitation. So say I want to use this variable and I call it here, I can always um, write the value, maybe make it uh, true, okay, and this will work. However, if I try to do this thing on other POU, maybe I created a sub-program. So in order to create a sub-program, we can just right-click, add POU, and you can create a program. So let me just uh, do it here. So this is POU1. And of course, this must be called in order for me to use it. So I'll just use it here. So I have to put the name of this POU. Okay. Now I can use this. So if I try to, sorry, if I try to copy this variable, on POU1 uh, so of course I write it a main okay and I try to write the value as soon as I try to compile and you can see what happens see it gives me an error so this is the limitation of declaring it in a local variable in contrast to a global variable so if you declare it in here it doesn't matter it can be read and write from any of these POU now, there are a lot of varieties of variables. Um, however, these are the most commonly used um, variable. I hope this will help you, especially the beginner, to start writing your own PLC program. Bye.